from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of Dell Technologies World. Digital Experience, brought to you by Dell Technologies. Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Dell Technologies World 2020, the digital experience. I'm Lisa Martin, joining, joined by a couple of guys from Dell Technology. Please welcome Martin Glenn, the Senior Director for Product Management for PowerMax. Martin, good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. And joining Martin is Matthew Paul, the Senior Director of Product Management for PowerFlex at Dell Technologies. Matthew, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks for having us, Lisa. So our virtual cube this year, can't be with you guys in person or the 14,000 other folks that usually attend at Dell Technologies World, but a lot of opportunities to engage customers and partners and press and analysts digitally, which is great. So Mar uh, Matthew, let's go ahead and start with you. Talk to us about what's new with PowerFlex. The re this was the kind of the end of the rebrand under the power portfolio that Dell Technologies undertook the last couple of years, formerly VX Specs, VX Flex, excuse me, from Scale.io, what's new with PowerFlex? Yeah, that's, a, that's a spot on. So really the idea of us aligning the full uh, power portfolio is kind of a big deal, right? Part of the winning roadmap 2.0, kind of assigned to our customers and our field and everyone that software defined storage is a critical part of the Dell Technologies strategy. Um, if you think about PowerFlex just to kind of level set, it's really a software defined infrastructure kind of system that brings you the best of traditional three-tier infrastructure and the best of HCI infrastructure, um, while being able to make that experience really simple in the enterprise while still delivering ex essentially a really great performance and scale. Uh, right, in terms so Mark, of new things, oh, well, just ahead, real quick, sorry. in terms of kind of new things, we brought interesting topics like native async replication, secure snapshots, uh, some end-to-end -end lifecycle management pieces. So a lot of great innovation in the last year. And that was some of the recent announcements. Tell me, Matthew, from a customer perspective, since you announced um, asynchronous application snapshots, what are what's the customer adoption, customer feedback been like? Yeah, it's been fantastic. We continue to grow this this market really strong. You know, we're focusing on uh, high end, large enterprise customers, uh, working towards um, bringing down uh, also into kind of com uh, enterprise uh, and commercial customers to be able to make things easier to use. Uh, but very strong adoption and uh, great investments here at Dell with this product. All right, so PowerFlex, Martin, let's go to you. PowerMax, talk to us about PowerMax and then also how it kind of fits into the whole power portfolio. Sure, yeah, so uh, thanks, Lisa. The PowerMax product, I think was the first product uh, other than of course the, the server products to be powered up in the storage portfolio. Um, so PowerMax is the, is the sort of flagship storage array product um, that we've had now for you know, a few decades, really been a leader in mission critical data centers. Um, but I think the pace of innovation over the last year, just like Matt described on the PowerFlex side has been uh, really phenomenal. We, you know, just about a year ago, we came out with storage class memory. Uh, we did fiber channel, uh, NVMe over fiber channel. Uh, and more recently, we brought in a few really interesting new technologies uh, like support for replication with VVols, um, cloud mobility, and now end-to-end uh, -end efficient encryption. So the set of things we're enabling our customers to do with their you know, sort of traditional three-tier SAN uh, infrastructure is really just um, unmatched. <clears throat> so Martin, talk to me about the last six, seven months. Where are these enterprise customers in terms of leveraging power maps, for example, when everything just, changed dramatically almost overnight. Enterprises in any every industry had to had suddenly a remote workforce. How do PowerMax help your customers pivot and ensure that their digital transformation could support this business surviving? Yeah, well, like like everybody, we were a little worried at the outset, you know, a lot of uncertainty about how things would play out. And um, the response from our customers has been amazing. Um, you know, they've all sort of really doubled down on you know, using our technology to support their businesses through this new model. So, you know, the, <clears throat> the business has been really amazing, really incredible, and it's been great to partner with our customers uh, to help them continue to deliver the services they need, you know, in this new model. So that part's been been really wonderful. And, 
as we work really closely with them, some of the things we just came out with, um, you know, they've helped us to, to design and deliver in a way that they can best take advantage of. So, you know, uh, for example, the, the new cloud mobility functionality, you know, that's letting them uh, take information directly off of you know, their mission critical sort of bedrock SAN infrastructure and push it up to an object store in a, like could be a local private object store, or could be a public object store like AWS. Uh, and so that's, you know, that's enabling them to, to take advantage of some uh, new models some a, a new approach to doing things. Um, and I think ultimately that that's going to help them uh, work through this, this you know, new, new normal we're all participating in. Yeah, we want to help those businesses not just to survive this time, but be able to thrive, especially as we don't know how much of this remote scattered workforce is going to remain. We're hearing estimates from some of the big technology leaders at all. 50% of, of the workforce is going to remain at home. So really helping organizations to um, maneuver and navigate these challenging landscapes is a big priority. I know for Dell Technologies, we talked about that with some other guests. Matthew, over to you, talk to me about PowerFlex from a workloads perspective so we can get a good idea for the, the workloads that it's really ideally best suited for. Yeah, I think um, wanted to just take a quick second on the COVID piece because we have a couple really big customers that we had to enable really quickly for curbside checkout. Uh, and uh, you know they were trying to run things, they were putting it on their existing infrastructure, their existing systems, and it just wasn't fast enough, it wasn't keeping up. And by working closely with the customer and designing a system with PowerFlex as the core, uh, allowed us to enable them really quickly to turn from a customer who didn't have this idea of curbside checkout to enabling curbside checkout. So I think working and partnering closely with our customers is a, cr a critical part of, of, of how Dell tech is successful in enabling them to kind of work through these tough times. Um, then, with workloads, yeah, oh, go ahead, sorry. That's okay, go ahead. I was gonna say with workloads in general, the way that we have to think about them with um, enterprise quality or enterprise requirements is really in kind of a scheme of looking at performance, understanding scalability, ensuring we have enterprise class availability, and then last but definitely not least is like how we manage that and how we make it easier for customers to work through those. And when I think about Flex, there's two or three uh, key areas that we try to go after. Uh, if you, if one of the key differentiation pieces around Flex is the fact that we can deploy it in multiple manners. So you can deploy it in an HCI mode where you have the compute and networking together, or you can deploy it in a disaggregated mode where you have compute and networking, I mean, compute and storage separate. And if those are separate, that allows you to scale those independently work really, really well for key database workloads, uh, key workloads like, let's say even like HANA, where you maybe have really high compute, but a little less storage requirements. So it really allows customers to dial up and down what makes the most sense for them, right? The other angle that we're seeing pretty big adoption is around this idea of replatforming or realigning a data center with transformation with software-defined scale-out block storage. So Think about deploying PowerFlex in an environment and then being able to use that in a virtual environment, in a physical environment, in a container environment, being able to have your traditional uh, uh, applications like SQL or Oracle right along really cool new applications like Elastic Stack or MongoDB, other things, because of the way that we design our, our layout, it's really uh, aligned towards being able to replatform and align in a software-defined infrastructure. So customers are using to kind of align those pieces, meaning uh, platforms, replatforming, and then also aligning specific applications that require high performance. I heard a lot in that, and sorry. one word that pops up is no, that's good. It's yeah, flexibility. Uh, no, I can tell you're passionate about it, and that's great. I love it. And also, yeah. the, the customer influence is is absolutely critical. I think this is a time you mentioned the curbside check in, and then I was reading a few months ago about some of the huge brands that were filing for Chapter 11 and companies like big retailers that simply couldn't pivot couldn't yeah. digitally transform to even offer curbside check-in. So that factor alone, since us consumers are so demanding, was table stakes a few months ago. It still is, but getting an organization able to pivot so quickly is key. Martin, let's go over to you. PowerMax workloads. Talk to me about some differentiators as well. Yeah, actually, if I could, I'll start you know, with sort of some similar examples that, that Matt laid out there. Um, you know, just, just like we have customers who chose PowerFlex, you know, where environments that made sense for them. We had PowerMax, customers who chose PowerMax, 
uh, to meet similar new demands with uh, with the whole uh, you know pandemic. So uh, we had some really big customers who said, all right, okay, now we have a sort of line of sight. And you know, across both products, I think the thing that our customers value most is you know the quality of the experience, the performance of the experience. Some of the things Matt mentioned already, but they really pulled forward you know huge numbers of systems and, and business to be able to support um, you know where, where they saw things going. So that was really great to to partner with them on that and be ready to help support them and provide a product that they you know felt really good about making such huge investments in. Um, you know, it was, it was great, great to, th to, to see their trust in us and be able to deliver for them. So, um, and that was, I think, a big part of the first half of the year, the, the sort of new, uh, you know, new workloads and new use cases for, for us on the PowerMax side uh, really revolve around giving our customers um, new capabilities so they can deliver new services for their end users. Um, so one of those is our new uh, support for VVOL's remote replication. And this really lets us tie together the uh, the way that the infrastructure is managed at the VMware level much more closely to the way that the storage infrastructure is managed. And the result is that our, our customers can do more granular operations for their end users. They can simplify the whole process. And now they can do it on top of our remote replication solution, which you know going on 20 plus years now has really been sort of the gold standard in which they've come to rely on so much. So that's really exciting to be able to, to offer that to them now, to have it you know, be part of the whole uh, VMware stack that they're deploying and let them use you know, new things like uh, you know, you know, the way VBALS works with our site, with the VMware Site Recovery Manager to let them automate um, you know, the, the, the testing of failovers and the actual failovers. So you know, there's an interesting example of, a, of how I think our customers are going to take advantage of some of these new technologies uh, as we go forward. You mentioned giving customers the ability with the right infrastructure to I, I offer new services. And that's another critical component, as we've seen in 2020, is businesses needing to pivot continuously and come up with new creative ideas, products and services, and new ways of delivering those to their existing customers, holding on to them, and hopefully growing uh, their customer base. And that ability to, to leverage technology to deliver new services is is also one of the key kind of foundations that will allow businesses to be the winners of tomorrow. Matthew, to you, talk to me when you're in customer situations, customers have choice, we know this. Dig into me, give me the top three differentiators when you're talking to customers, why PowerFlex is the ideal solution for them? That's that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> so I think you know, uh, as part of being a product guy, it's really cool when the intellectual property within your product is software that your company owns and hardware your company owns. So we're able to do some really cool stuff together to deliver innovative solutions for our customers. But you know, when I think about my product, I think first and foremost around performance and scale, right? Uh, you know, you know, several million IOPS at sub millisecond response time and Anytime someone wants more performance, they just add another server, right? So this idea that we scale linearly is a key differentiator for the product. Uh, a, a second key differentiator is this idea that I talked a little bit about before that we, you can kind of multi-platform this. So when you roll this out, um, you can uh, deploy it and use it with virtual environments, whether it's VMware or, or um, uh, Hyper-V or other virtual environments. You can have bare metal deployments. So if you want to run this with Linux and use software-defined storage in the bare metal, we can support that. Or we can go directly to, to containers. So you can use containers, bare metal, or virtual. And so this idea of choice is a huge differentiator. And then the last one is anchored around this idea that when you scale and you get the benefit of, of management, you don't have to scale everything at the same time. So in traditional software-defined infrastructure on the HCI side, you have to scale compute and storage together. So every time you add a node, you add compute power and storage power. With PowerFlex, we've been able to effectively split those two pieces off so a customer could actually only scale what they need. And in fact, if they only want to buy storage side of the solution, you can just buy storage side of the solution, and then you can have existing infrastructure connect to that, and it behaves just like a traditional three-tier three, three -tier model. So those are, I think, are the key things that I think differentiate the product and kind of make it special here at Dell and, and for our customers. 
Matthew, sticking with you, are there any, I, I think of things like compliance and healthcare and financial services, especially right now, what are some of the key benefits that PowerFlex delivers, say, for some of those essential uh, industries right now? Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting because those are two of our largest space and financial is probably our largest space. And really for them, it comes down to, you talked about compliance, you talk about scale, and then you talk about management. So we've had some really interesting requirements because the scale is so large. For example, in our last release, we're able to start to do rack level firmware and software updates. So we're, we're, when you look at other solutions, they might be doing system at a time, doing updates, taking them offline, and then run, running those around. But in, the, in our scenario, since we kind of own the SDS layer and the compute side, we can actually do updates for an entire rack in one shot dramatically reducing the complexity, dramatically reducing the amount of time it takes to do updates. So that's a real big deal in financial space. And then in terms of um, healthcare, for example, we're the only software-defined solution uh, product that can run all of Epic Healthcare, all pieces of Epic within our product. All other products run out of uh, bandwidth, run out of performance. So they end up on, not, not being able to run all sides of the, the, the requirement, whether it's the database backend or the VDI front end we're the only one on the market that can do all of that. That seems to really be a big differentiator in healthcare as a lot of organizations run on Epic or try to to help with patient care and care delivery. Martin, last question for you. Give me a snapshot of the partner's perspective. Over the last couple of years with the rebrand under Dell Technologies with the power portfolio, how have your partners embraced this simplification? So, you know, I think that uh, overall this gave them clearer understanding of where and what to sell and what made sense uh, for PowerMax in particular. You know, I think it let them anchor on, you know, uh, the, the flagship product, you know, the legendary performance and reliability of that platform and, you know, gave them an easy way to think about where to, uh, where to position that with, you know, our end customers. And you know, in what ways that the the product would benefit their customers the most. So, you know, as Matt described on the on the PowerFlex slide, uh, it starts with our you know performance and reliability, um, and then ultimately you know enabling them to do whatever they need to do. So, across all the different data services, and we got to talk already about some of the some of the new ones. Um, you know, but uh, we also have a lot that we've uh, you know re refined over the years, and you know making it sort of official and sort of the power max uh, envelope let everyone really just um, sort of simplify how they would how they would consume it all so you know I think you know maybe one other thing uh, you know worth mentioning in all these new you know use cases and environments and you know all the different applications that our, our customers are trying to to uh, operate and deliver on is um, you know security you know so <clears throat> we uh, we developed a, a new capability we call end-to-end -end efficient encryption. Um, and this really lets customers do encryption all the way from the host through to the storage. Uh, and you know, I think ultimately that's gonna help them sleep better at night um, uh, and also you know, uh, help them avoid you know, some of the things that we've seen crop up now, uh, now that this, the world is so digital and all the different uh, threats that our, our customers face. So you know, we're keeping our, our finger on the pulse of a lot of different uh, needs, you know, whether it's flexibility, performance, reliability, but all these new new technologies as well to make sure that we set our customers up to be uh, to be as successful as possible. That's exactly what they want to be successful. Martin, Matthew, thank you so much for joining me on the Cube, sharing the updates for PowerMax, PowerFlex, the differentiators. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. This was fun. All right, for my guests. I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE's coverage of Dell Technologies World 2020, the digital experience.